What's up, Philly? I know everybody out there fucked up. Y'all got fucked up backs. Everybody all fucked up. So don't act like you not. So I need y'all to go hook my guys over at Philly Cairo because they, they can hook your back right back up. Y'all shit all fucked up. They going to fix your shit back right. If y'all got any fitness or if y'all work, do any stressful work and y'all pulling y'all back and all that shit be all fucked up. Hit my guys over at Philly Cairo, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to regret it. You're definitely not going to regret it. If y'all if y'all suffering from any kind of neck pain, headaches, digestive issues, hand, foot numbness, chronic fatigue, muscle spasm, joint pain, all the above, and much more, hit my guys over at Philly Cairo, you know what I'm saying? Because they motto is put yourself in good hands. So when you're with them, you're in good hands. You're not in, you're not in okay hands. You're in good hands, you know what I'm saying? You're in the best hands, you feel what I'm saying? So go hit my guys over at Philly Cairo. The best part about all this shit is you get 25% off when using promo code PWP. Don't forget, PWP, promo code PWP, 25% off, don't forget. You can find my guys, Brewery Town Chiropractic, a.k.a. Philly Cairo on Instagram over at 27th and Gerard. You can't miss them. They right up on the corner, you know what I'm saying? Boom, right there in the middle. If your back fucked up, go check them out. You can't miss it. Bang. And my back kind of hurt now. What's up, Philadelphia? This is Fuck With Philly. And look, sometimes, guys, I know you can't keep your shit up in the bedroom. Maybe you're slacking. Maybe you're stressed out of work. Maybe you're not healthy. But today we can save you. And that's why we are sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew gets your dick up. Listen, fellas, sometimes we need a pre-workout. Sometimes you don't want to go to the gym. And Blue Chew is like a pre-workout. It makes you fuck good. Look, if you want confidence in the bedroom, maybe even slacking a little bit, maybe even someone coming too fast, maybe you can't get your shit up when you use a condom. Guess what? Blue Chew is here to save you. And there's a promo code called FUCK, P-H-U-C-K, that gets you a free shipment. You can get your dick up on us. <laughs> That's never... Not like that. You can get your free shipment on us. Still sounds kind of suspect. <laughs> if you want a USA approved FDA straight from America, not some dick pills in the fucking gas station that's probably meth, this is real FDA approved. It is the same thing as Viagra Cialis, except it's cheaper, and it's a chewable tablet that hits faster. So guys, go to bluechew.com. That's bluechew.com, and get your first shipment free using promo code FUCK. P H U C K. Concept, concept, concept. What's up, everybody? This is Fucking Philly. Live from the Fucking Philly studio. Live from the makeshift studio. Fuck, let me do it again. You, concept, 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 concept. Yeah, what's up, everybody? This is Fucking Philly. Live from makeshift studios with your host, MC Ali Rondo, Aaron the Foot Talk, and our special guest today, Pastor Carl Day. Everybody, give it up. Give it what's up. Pass the pass. You talk Now, today, Rondo, so we. Chill, man. You talk. No, I'm just like uh, professional. It's like uh, going once, going twice, going three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the name? What's the call? An auctioneer. An auctioneer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like a racehorse guy. Coming in third. Coming in second. Coming in third. Everything. Now today we are sponsored by Top Dog Law. Now if you get fucked up in the city of Philadelphia, you can call Top Dog. What else can you call Top Dog for, Rondo? Shit. Uh, anything. I might <laughs> trip out of here while I'm drinking this kombucha, and if something happened, I might be able to call Top. You know. But I'm not going to drive. No, no drinking and driving. I mean, Yeah, walking, there you go. Yeah. You know. Ronald's not yeah. drinking and driving. Not at all. But if you are drinking and driving, maybe you could call Top. No. Or if someone rear ends you and you don't know what to do, take a. You can call Top. He'll tell you exactly what to do. He can't has call his top Instagram. If you're drinking and driving. Don't, don't call, call Top. Don't call Top if you're drinking and driving. <laughs> if you top, get locked up for murder, call Top. No, I was trying to hear from you. But uh, yeah, so what you could do is go to Top Dog Law on Instagram and you could talk to Top Dog Law to Gay, who gets you Top Dollar. Top Dog. Now, today we're with. Pastor, Pastor Carl, Carl. Yo, yo. a pastor, an activist, uh, a activist especially out of Philadelphia. Um, we saw you debating with Trump, which is fucking awesome, man. We saw that yeah, kind of yeah, go yeah, down yeah, and everything. Yeah. Um, so maybe just to start, are you? So you're from Philadelphia? Yep, born and raised North Philly. North Philly. Yeah. What was it like, uh, like growing up when you were growing up? I mean, growing up when I was growing up is as much of the same as we see right now. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, drugs, violence, um, you know, friends in and out of jail, you know what I mean? Much of the same. So, you know, uh, this is exactly why, you know, I do what I do. Coming mm. from it, uh, going through it, um, you know, it, it's a lot of people surprised how we got here. But it's like for me, I'm like, man, this was this was due. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, debate, everything was set and 
all of this been in motion. You know what I'm saying? So what we see today is a byproduct of what we've been seeing for quite some time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Growing up was North Philly. was North Philly. Yeah. You know, and it's still North Philly right now. It's been the same, yeah. So that's why my comments to Trump wasn't just for him. I told him specifically, you know, this greatness of America, we ain't seen it under Obama. We ain't seen it under the Clintons. We ain't seen it under Bush. Right. <laughs> the hood been the hood. The hood been the hood, yeah. So, yeah. So what got you into, like, ministry were you always like religious growing up or is that something that kind of later nah, on came about no nah, i'm about to say nah yo um i didn't grow up in a religious household at all um yeah like i probably went to church like probably like for like easter because mm -hmm. like my my uncle like my grandma's brother was like a deacon so we would like, okay. go to easter we would go like to church real fast and then go to my aunt's crib in ac and we would hit, like the boardwalk and all that kind of stuff in Atlantic city so mm -hmm. uh spend time with family out there but um yeah, man, I don't know, like, while well, I was still running the streets, um, at, at one point, you know what I mean, like, a pop, about, probably about a year and a half before um, I actually, you know, got locked up myself, um, I was actually doing good, good for myself, met a pastor at a church that I just started to go to, um, and he connected with me and was just like, yo, man, God asked me to talk with me one day after church, and he was like, yo, you know, God been showing me some things about you, and... I'm just like this dude tripping <laughs> like I'm sitting way in the back I ain't even really trying to be noticed mm -hmm. but it's like you know you go in there and you feel like a message is there for you um and I used to sit over at the top in the back so like when he did this gesture like he wanted to talk to me I was just like you know what do you want to talk to me for yeah, yeah. Man. so you know he told me it's like man God's calling me to reach out to you to start something for young adults and at the time I probably was like I don't even know I probably was like 22 23 and I'm just like dude I got gun in the car and <laughs> drugs like this, this i got shit to do you yeah i'm like but but it, but he was yeah. like you know I, I really wanted to see if it's something that you want to do and take this journey with me and i'm you know and even just in the streets like i believe in honor and everything so i'm just like you know i got respect for him because i i know i want to come back here next sunday so i'm like right all right cool like, just somebody I'll do that it. you had a relationship with nah, that you, or like, just i was i was actually having to just meet him because you know again man I, I was you know out in the county and like that's why i had a crib at out there and i was just going right like you know what i'm saying and it was like a month and a half in right. this dude said he wanted to talk to me so i'm like i'm like what you want to talk about yeah, yeah so what I, what, what I do? he asked me <laughs> if i wanted to you know take the journey so i'm like mm -hmm. all right cool <laughs> yeah and you know so what got me in the ministry, I was learning, he was teaching me and discipling me, but I still had, you know what I mean, 10 toes in the streets while I was right. still learning, but my mind's opening up about the word and the Bible and everything else. And I'm just like, but it was always a cool vibe too, like being around him and other like Christians to where like, I'm out, but I ain't gotta be like, all right, let me not take this different way home. Cause mm -hmm. I ain't gotta worry about nobody trying to like, be on angles and follow me home or something. Right. So it was like a cool vibe of being yeah. around people and you ain't got to second guess everybody. Right. And, but you know, and then like I had caught multiple cases back to back and caught the second one where I was out on bail. And then from there it was like, you know, half a million out of bail, I couldn't get out. So I sat in, in the county, man, when I was able to just had a time between me and God, my reverend didn't give up on me. Um, and you know, I seen so many younger people Cause I was fighting drama and, and they was fighting drama and we mm. in cells and they fighting homicide cases and um they young they 18 you know I was still young too but I'm like you know these they ain't really been out of the city and I'm like man you ain't been to Cherry Hill Mall before yeah and they just offered you 60 right. years like you know right. what I'm saying so in there I really started doing a lot of the work um and had got a little job in the in the, in the church in jail working with the chaplain and my reverend was like yo this is what you you know, and it dawned on me, like, hey, he was, he really knew what he was talking about. Cause like everybody in the jail, I'm holding Bible study down on the block and all that. And dudes was like, yo, you got to do this when you get out. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, oh, I was told this <laughs> you know, over a year ago that I'm supposed to do this when I'm out. So he was right the whole time. He was right the whole time. Like, yo, yeah. he really heard from God. Like, yeah. so, so like when people say that, cause before I'm just like, man, whatever, you ain't hear that from God, but you know, that, that turned out to be true. So. Is that person currently still active in that church today? No, 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 no. He passed away. Oh, so that was the other thing. Like when, piece. yeah, like, yeah. When, when I was blessed to beat one case and then I had to, you know, technically I was supposed to be free, but they 
considered me dangerous or whatever, so I had to sit on, you know, pretrial house arrest, and they kept me on that for 20 months. Wow. Yeah, well, the same mm. case open. So, that's, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's like, but that's the games they play with you. So that's why, like, that that, that all leads to the activism. So, like, when mm. I'm out here fighting for reforms and all that, I know what they do to you right. when they house you and hold you against your will technically. Um, but, yeah, so he had passed away while I was on house arrest, but I still was doing ministry work with the church even from that. Um, and then, when, man, when I hit the ground running, like, when I got off, it was like, all right, let's go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, yeah. So, like, I even, but I even, I ain't gonna lie. Like, you know, I even, uh, you know, I had a witness and all that kind of stuff. And the dude was coming to court saying stupid mm -hmm. stuff. But it was like, so the support that the church gave me, that people wrote all these letters for and everything else during my time, like, the DA and them folded and was just like, we'll offer you this if, you know, you plea out and you take the guilty charge for the guns and this and that. Um, and credit you time served. So, and they thought they were setting me up. Like, I, I had 10 years probation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like fam, I had 10 years probation. I just walked that off last year. So, wow, man. So, I've been, yeah, I beefed with Trump and all that while still <laughs> being on probation. Isn't that wild, bro? That's crazy. But that's also the problem with the, the system is, like, they, they keep you locked up when you're even out. I'm about to say, that's what what's the name was going through. I think he was on probation for like 10 years. Who that, me? Yeah, yeah. He, he was yeah. on probation for Yeah, he years. definitely was. And that's really trying to, like, think about that. Think about how, trying to have, because what is, like, what is it? No police contact? Like, you like, can't have. No police contact. You're you not can't, supposed can't go to out of no, state, you're right? You're not supposed to have no contact with felons. And, yeah, you can't be going out of state. But the thing was, it was like, honestly speaking, you know, like, God was all in my situation because, um, you know, I had to sit a year on blackout because they literally, I couldn't couldn't go outside like and even when i had to fight them to just be able to go to church like they, they literally only told me i can go to the church it was like <laughs> within close proximity to my people's crib down north philly so i had to they had to basically pick what church i can go to because wow. i couldn't be outside long so like yeah outside of that i couldn't do much it, doctor's appointments and that was it um you know so like um that that's that's just real like with that being said um then i was able to come out a little bit you know what i'm saying um but still had to be back in at a certain time because I had a job um, and that was able to get me outside a little bit. But by the time that was said and done, man, you know, the restrictions was crazy. But my PO had found out about what I was doing and my judge happened mm -hmm. to let, a, let her know about everything I had in place mm -hmm. to the point where, like, most people got pee in the cup. Like, I'm a violent offender, so most people would pee in the cup every week. Mm -hmm. They was like, listen, we see everything you doing and heard about everything you was doing, like, you just report to us once a month, like come down and report. So I'm mm -hmm. like, cool. I'll take that. Right. Yeah. But yeah. then it got crazy because then it was like, you know, a year after and like my, me and my pill was like vibing. She knew I was doing work in ministry. She asked me about the preachers of LA and all that kind of reality TV crap. I'm like, I don't watch that nonsense. <laughs> but, but like a year later, I get a call and she like, yeah, you know, you got to meet us down here. So I'm like, damn, like what's going on? Right. And you know, um, they end up putting me to another PO. And I'm like, why y'all switching my PO up? And they was like, you know, well, because of the work you're doing everything else, we want to put you on the lightest probation possible. So, like, for, like, the remaining, like, probably, like, seven years straight, I was reporting on and off. No, I'm lying. Probably, like, six years. I was reporting on the computer. Like, mm. once. Yeah, once every couple months. You're like, and they, I'm and fine. They, yeah, and they took away. Yeah. <laughs> and they, took away, and they took away, you know, yeah. they took away my travel restrictions and all that. Like, oh, yo, awesome. you know, they're like, yeah, you want to speak somewhere? You want to do something? They like, yo, you know, um, yeah, just let us know, you know, with your itinerary, what you gonna do. Yeah, and that was that. Okay. So like, That's yeah, solid. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, cause so so it's just like, you know, proof that I mean, a God is real, but two, like, you handling your business, you know what you gotta do. Sometimes they relax those standards, like depending on your circumstances. But um, yeah, yeah. So a lot of times I forgot, I be forgetting I'm on probation until like somebody make me angry or something. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I'm on probation. Damn it, nah, I yeah, it. yeah. So it's like, like, nah, nah, I can't like, do nothing. Right. Bro. So okay. I mean, I, outside of praying and all that, but I'm like, man, I'm, I'm on probation. I ain't got time to be playing these people. <laughs> you can't but, smack the fuck out of you right now, I'm man. On probation, so. so overall, would you say that that experience helped you in the long run? That well, not even just the probation or that. I'm talking about like even just that sit down time. That you had just to sit back and like just reflect on everything that was going on and just uh because a lot of times i feel like because i heard what's the name say this i heard wallow say this like sometimes you just move around too much and i got folks in my family i'll be trying to tell this to and everybody like mm -hmm. sometimes like you just move, people just move around too much and don't really even sit to even think about what's going on around them you know what i'm saying sometimes mm -hmm. you need that sit down time just to reflect like yo i'm really out here ripping you know what i mean like and sometimes that time helps whether it be like a, a short amount of time or a longer amount of time me personally i don't think that like 
uh, except for like the rapists and like shit like that and and, yeah. and and murder, you know, shit like that. I don't think people should be sitting for their entire life and shit like but that. But also it depends on what you do while you're inside, right? So it's exactly. like, because that's why hard. You, it's you hard you to even stay straight when you're on the inside because you're that around too. other criminals. Like, that too. You know what yeah, I'm saying? You so to be a better like, criminal. Yeah, too. So yeah. I mean, was that hard kind of sticking in a path like while you're inside? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I say this, yes and no. Like, because, mm. so to your question, like, definitely jail saved my life. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, outside of the Lord, like, outside right. of Christ himself, like, jail saved my life. That experience and me being able to sit down, man, I was moving 100 miles an hour. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I, a lot of my homies, even down to our youngins, was going through wars and they was going through their own beefs. And it, it was so much going on. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, like, for, for me, that sit down time because I had my two oldest sons at the time that were youngins at the time, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, um, like, and that's why I really got to really, really, really not only just get to know God from an intellectual level, but they got to see God work physically because right. my biggest concerns wasn't when I went in, like, oh, I need protection and everything else, which is also one reason why, like, man, I <laughs> I was admit, like, yo, I came in these doors Christian. I ain't coming out nothing else but a Christian. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just me. Like, I was who I was when I was out here. I know how to fight. I ain't afraid of nothing. Like, yeah, I'm right. good. <laughs> so I came in and held it down with my faith, with no converting or nothing. And at the same time, um, I really, like, got dug all the way in with God on an intellectual level. But I saw him work physically because my biggest concerns was, like, dang, I was the breadwinner and provider for my kids. Mm -hmm. So how everything else gonna get done and god was like i'm gonna show you how like because he and he and, and then that it dawned on me like yo he could do this without me mm -hmm. so i might as well get on his agenda you feel what i'm saying yeah. like i'm gonna join with him there you <laughs> go out, look yeah. the birthdays and the christmas like guess what it still was going on even while you gotta be on that phone and you gotta tap in from the phone you I feel mean, what i'm saying so true. so it showed me that like yo like god was showing me like yo if you want to live and you really want to be here right that's your choice you feel me? So right. yeah, and it'd be difficult for guys who coming in and they haven't made their minds up yet. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So like for some people, like you said, like folks think they gonna get in there and become better criminals because mm -hmm. they're building a bigger network. Right, now it's right. like you touch the bricks, you come out and you like, yo, I'm oh, I got homie now now South Philly. Right, like he right. book, my yeah. man out west. Yeah. But it's like, yo, um, yeah, man, that, those correctional facilities only serve as a form of correction if you want to be corrected. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Some dudes is coming in there just focused on, man, as soon as I get out, as soon as I get out. And it's just like, yo, are you really, really trying to, you know what I'm saying, change? So, um, and what's made available to help you change too. Because some of them programs, and unfortunately, that's why some guys really don't find out until they hit up state. Because mm -hmm. the county, man, county be wild. It's like, you know, people running around, acting crazy and everything else. And, and it's like some of them guys ain't get mentors or whatever until they got upstate and right. met the old heads who got life. Yeah. And it's like, then a life is sitting you down and they really saying bring it ain't you down. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, again, man, yeah, Joe definitely, definitely, definitely saved my life, man. Like, so I... I'm able to look at it on the back end and praise God for that experience, but also be able to, cause Joe made me sensitive to everybody else's needs. I'm gonna be honest with you. Between, like I said, between my faith, but also being in there and putting my faith to action. Like looking at crackheads as less than you mm -hmm. when you was out here at one point, but mm -hmm. then you pop up in the county and all that kind of stuff. You should, you bound to share a cell with anybody. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like they put anybody in your cell. You know what I'm saying? They put a homosexual in your cell. And it's like, you know, some people that you might have looked at as less than as human beings or whatever, mm -hmm. little crazy views you might have had on people, people's addiction. So mm -hmm. now I'm in there. I'm cool. I can go to the store. I can hit commissary. But my celly is cold in there. You 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 hold your celly down. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. he ain't got nobody looking out. So now you understand what it's like for the homeless community to go through what they go through. Cause now they sharing they in, you know experiences, giving you insight. Cause otherwise you was outside, you wouldn't talk to these people. That's mm -hmm. that, wow. Yeah, that's you know a different so, way to look at it. A lot of that gave me that heart when I was like for people. I'm seeing young boys in there thought it was a game. They're right. 18 years old, they running around, like literally running around in the county, running yeah. to playing tag, basketball, <laughs> all that, arguing over basketball. And they come back into the cell. I'm like, yo, if you was taking a series out there like that, you wouldn't even be in here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. But then they fight homicide. Now they've been sitting. They in the mm -hmm. second year now. You know what I mean? Dudes fight homicides. You sit in two, three years just to fight it. I'm just to beat it. it. Just, just yeah. to beat it. And, and you beat it. it. Ain't You don't get no, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no, hey, yo, we got to check for you because you beat the homicide. No, you yeah. lost three years of your life. Yeah. Go be free. You know what I'm saying? So them young boys that was playing, come sentencing, it's totally different ball game. Yeah. When you finally get in trial, suddenly now all that player and that laughter and all that, it ain't no joke no more. I had young boys come to me, ask me, talk to me and selves, mm -hmm. cry, break down, try and pray, ask me to pray with them. 
Mm -hmm. Never talk about. I'm in my Bible. They sitting there one bed or they laughing. They keeping it moving. You know. And I'm like, yo, come on, come sit with me. Nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm about to go play ball. All right, bet. And now it's time for sentencing. Yeah, I mean, they break it down. Crying. Cool. I got yeah. offered forty to sixty, and my PD told me, you know what I'm saying? I ain't. Yeah. If I'm forty to sixty, not me. They, oh, them, oh, I'm about to say. They, God, no, damn. I got offered fifteen to thirty though. But, Shit. but, but yeah, like you know, so they sitting there breaking down because they didn't know how real it was. Like now it's trial. They that feel week, it. That week you only want to eat. Right. Oh, you can have my tray. You, right. can, you mean you only want to eat? No, that's real. Now yeah. they see how real it is, and they like, yo, they told me if I don't take it, I might just get out, like get life. Yeah. And that's the thing too. You see a lot, especially with Philadelphia. It's like the youth are really killing each other. You know for what I'm sure, it's like when people are getting locked up for the shootings. And someone that's 16 years old, it's someone that's 18 years old. It could I be some like 14 year old, younger, 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 younger and younger. Which you I think they have like, a god complex sometimes. Like I can't get hurt. This is a game almost thing. Yeah, a lot, I feel like a lot of people think too. They're not gonna Absolutely. get. Not yeah. me. Not me. Everybody and anybody but me. It can't happen to me. You know what I'm saying? But it seems like there's not a lot of guidance in Philadelphia too. I and mean, there's just different people to look up to. That's why I was saying. So do you think that like? I know you said that jail saved your life or, you know, that situation saved your life. But would you say that that's what you needed to save your life? Or do you think it could have been another way that you went about making that change? You know what I'm saying? See, no, nah, like, I think they went hand in hand. But I like for me, especially as a, 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 a man of faith, like it really was God's doing because like it was those seeds that were sown into me by somebody else of the faith. That made me sensitive and aware of all that. Cause you gotta understand, if I ain't nobody plant none of them seeds of spirituality, faith, right. and love in my heart, right. at first, I'm coming in there under the same mental that everybody else coming in there under. Yep. See what I'm saying? I'm gonna Absolutely. brag about what I was doing out here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come in, carry my same persona, Absolutely. my reputation gonna precede me. You follow what I'm saying? And I could get right in every mix. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like when I was doing what I was doing in there. Like my Muslim homies from the streets, everybody else, they they respected me because they knew who I was anyway. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like we all had a respect for each other, but they respected me too, being rooted in my faith. Yeah. So that's why for me the transition was easy. When mm -hmm. I was coming back out in the street, I'm like, yo, if I'm in here with all alleged tough guys, well, we all tough guys in here, right? And I'm standing on my faith heavy. That's gonna be. That's a breeze. Walk it down. Yeah, yeah. that's a breeze. Like, oh yeah, I ain't got a problem with being bold for Christ and talking to people about Jesus and letting people know this where I'm at with it. Cause we in here all day where everybody got put a front on. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I feel like when you have faith in something, man, it just you feel lighter. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's sure. like, like I, I mean, like uh, I'm not that religious, but my my son's mom is, and I went to like a Baptist church with her for the longest, like seven years or something. Okay, you went to and, a Baptist church? Yeah, I went to a Baptist church. Huh? Yeah, that's the only white motherfucker there. I'll tell I'm you about that to say much. everybody, yeah. he, everybody, he be he be he, he they be fuck with me us. though. He be with us. Yeah, but anyways, but the the thing that passed with me was something that really resonated with me was just like he said, it's just nice to let go and let God for sure. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and I do it every morning. I ain't gonna lie, like not to get too like personal or nothing, but like I just pray for the things that scare me the most. Which is losing my son, mm. which is, uh, am I financially stable? Is my family okay? And I just let it go and I just go like, and it's, it's like a weird, it kind of like releases my anxiety in the morning when I just like get it out on the plate and it lets me know what is important. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so much shit coming in now, especially social media and yeah. television and all this other shit. It's hard to know like what's really important or like what are you really worried about? You know what I'm saying? Do you think that the youth in Philadelphia could, I mean, obviously benefit from having maybe like a faith? Because I feel like some people just don't have, faith in some of the things anymore right no or not even faith in the city sometimes for sure um i definitely think i mean I, i've said is that plenty of press conferences hearings all kinds of stuff but it's definitely philly suffer from a it's an inward condition you feel what i'm saying like you know and it's some things i'm working with with some folks from the mayor's office and everything else that we're proposing and that we're going to try to make happen but um it's the inward it's an inward issue man a lot of these youngins you know don't feel like they got much to live for they focused on everything that they willing to die over and they don't mm. think they got much to live for so Absolutely. you know um and, and unfortunately the, the thing is time is, is is of an essence where we at right now because they're on the wrong side of time like traditionally when it came to beefs a lot of times those who continue to live longer after you've lost what you lost even when you lost friends and family members as you got older you know, and you had kids, you have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So that stuff started making you think twice. Right. Like, even with you and what they call the ops, you like, y'all looking at each other like, dang, so, dang, so seven of y'all homies went to jail, six of ours, four of y'all ours died, three of y'all died. I ain't trying to be next. Yeah. Right. Like, you <laughs> mean, I didn't got these kids, I didn't just got a job. Yeah, like, y'all y'all trying to chill? All right, let's chill. And that's what happens. But like you said, they getting younger and younger. So when you're 14, they ain't got responsibility for a long time. Mm -hmm. Right. So 
it's a dangerous thing but inwardly man you can't slap a band-aid on a bullet hole and that's what like when people talk politically because a lot of that resources jobs you know what i'm saying like i sit in them spaces all day and i always bring this to them yo you know what i mean bi vocational drug dealers and killers i knew mm -hmm. dude i had jobs where i was doing a lot of stuff that i was doing you know what i'm saying yeah. like so so dudes uh catch wreck at night and go to work <laughs> the, the, during the daytime like this is nine and five yeah, yeah, that's what they five. do that's so real. so so you know you gotta definitely I, I and i believe it was it, you definitely need the elements of faith like whether it's the islamic community whether it's the christian community or whatever it is that people believe you definitely have to bring that to the people because that's an inward sense of conviction that otherwise we don't have like as people especially when we're young and you know what i'm saying like mm. we dog I, I fam i came home and i still was a young young man but it was certain things that was in me that then was there when it was never there like i'm coming home like yo i got two kids already my next real relationship dog i'm seeking marriage like i'm not about to play mm -hmm. i ain't trying to be 30 then then did three years with a girl and then had another baby and then be yeah. on my next situation then meet another girl at 32 and she ain't got no kids and she want more kids yeah, i'm right, like right. nah i'm not doing none of this yeah. but it was like honestly i can't do nothing but like and i ain't over spiritualizing anything but i can't give credit to that to nobody but god you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying when i'm coming home and i got dudes this welcoming me back in the way that they welcome you back it's like yo i got xyz here take this i don't want nothing back mm -hmm. i'm like no you take this i don't even, i don't <laughs> yeah. want nothing right, right, right. you yeah, see right. what i'm saying like i'm cool but again it ain't no i can't attribute that to nothing else but like that's that's the work of god fam because mm -hmm. 95 percent of the people 98.9 percent of the people gonna come take advantage of opportunity Absolutely. and everything else you know what i mean girls hitting you up hey yo so i heard you home i'm on house arrest cuz and they like yo i'm trying to come yeah. i'm like no i'm I'll chilling, I'm chilling. Yeah, yeah i'm chilling i'm nah like yeah. again that's nothing but god you see what i'm saying and too mm. often we this is where like people lose hope and faith when we only attach material things to god where it's mm. like i gotta show you alexis in order for you to really believe god is real yeah but i can show you inwardly things that changed about me that I can't take credit for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not even like an appetite for something ain't there, but the discipline that's there now ain't even from my own strength. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when we start to incorporate beliefs and it's just like, you know what I mean? Um, not to cut you out of this, but like as the black community, mm -hmm. we were at our strongest point. Like we got people now pushing us away from religion. Mm -hmm. We were at our strongest point when we were religious people. Mm -hmm. When you had Martin and Malcolm, those who we continue to look to and keep asking for the new Martin and Malcolms, but we try to push religion out of it. It was through their faiths mm -hmm. that pushed them to build the movements out that they built. You see what I'm saying? And many of the people that, you know, went and came before them, you know, faith mobilized and moved our people throughout history to lead us to our liberation and lead us to the ways in which we went. And that's when our people still had a sense of pride uh -huh. and a sense of community. You see what Absolutely. I'm saying? That inward conviction that Absolutely. don't exist otherwise unless God is really present within the individuals. That that's where we get a soul. That's where we got a soul. Now I care about my neighbor. Right, right, right. Otherwise, yeah. man, I don't know him. He just got shot. So what? Yeah, yeah. That ain't my man. Boom, and I just keep it moving. Mm. You know, I'm just glad it wasn't my homies. Mm. Yeah. That's our mentality. Mm. You know, or they kids, oh man, they lights off, they still in electric. Dang, well, who how, when 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 we gonna come together, ask like how much is that electric bill? Yeah. Like a communal. Like, Absolutely. It's easy. It's uh to have a village is a lot easier than just being one on one all the time. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So I mean, you you touched a little bit on politics. I mean, what like I, I mean, you're would you consider yourself into politics? Possibly. I mean, because you you end up on all these spots like talking about the city, talking about these other things. Was that is that anything you'd ever be interested in? No. No. <laughs> Why is that? It's I get asked that dirty off, business. Off <laughs> it ain't it ain't for me, man. Yeah. Um, you know, and people. I've been asked by people to run and you know <laughs> people want me to run for stuff some, i was just gonna some i was people, gonna i wrote that down yeah some, some, like, some, run? <laughs> some, 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 run, really some so, people yeah. some people have told me you know some people expecting you to run in politics and i'm like nah what well, are you expecting the I'm wrong thing no, sure. like you know <laughs> but but on a real now nah, like i'm i'm good man you know um i pastor and and, and i and i organize and lead and for me um i like the uh autonomy that I have, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for this, I'll say. Um, if people wanna do this, organize and build up some real in-house candidates within our communities that we really need to start to challenge some of the incumbents, mm -hmm. I'm all for that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, 
just like I'm all for still working with everybody um, and holding them accountable and leveraging the re relationships that I have mm -hmm. within the political world to bring resources back to my people. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because that's that's where that's where my stance is. Like I tell people that all the time. I'm independent. Um, you know the Trump situation, like it was like crazy. Yeah, how did that? How did that? Yeah, I wanted to touch about. on that. I wanted yeah. to kind of just for I was saving the people it for that this, don't know. Yeah. Like what what was what all went down? Just for the people that don't know. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, it was a town hall, um, and I was asked to, you know, be one of the people that participated. Um, and, you know, I asked Trump, the, you know, the question about make America great again. How was tone deaf? Um, do he realize how tone deaf it was? And, you know, especially considering that, you know, America's never been great for people of color. You've coined the phrase, make America great again. Right. When has America been great for African Americans in the ghetto of America? Are you aware of how tone deaf that comes off to African-American community? Well, I can say this. We have tremendous African-American support. Well, I mean, your statement is, though, make it great again. So historically, uh, the African-American experience, especially in these, out of these ghettos that have been out of red line, uh, historically, these ghettos that have systemically been set up, you have yet to address and acknowledge okay. that there's been a race problem in America. So if you go, well, I hope there's not a race problem. I can tell you there's none with me because I have great respect for all races for everybody you can't point to a, a decade of greatness for black people like it just is it, not it Absolutely. you know um and any of our success has been short term and short lived because you know unfortunately we had some white supremacists that would come and kill us and destroy everything that we built um and he proceeded to say you know he don't have a problem or he don't have a race issue and he was like and i hope there's not a race <laughs> issue in america so you know, and then I continue to further press him and just talk about, you know, the history of red line and everything else. Um, and, you know, so I don't know, it kind of went viral a little bit because um, that's the president. Uh, but the crazy <laughs> thing is, it's like um, from there, because I failed to also endorse Biden. Like, dude, I was getting attacked by everybody. Mm. People don't even know that. Like, wow. what emails going off? People sent letters to my church. People, people go 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 in yeah, about that. Yeah, people, so that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like, why do you have level. to pick a side in general? It Man, just seems so silly. Like. When my stance literally was like, "Yo, I need to see people's plan for us." You right. know what I'm saying? So like, I'm like, just because I asked him questions and he couldn't really answer it, you know, I left the door for open for the you know, pre uh, Vice President Biden at the time, like for him to address some of the things too. But yeah, man, I had Democrats like. As a pastor, you ought to get out here and get that evil man out and blah, blah, blah. And then I had the Republicans that was like, man, I got all kinds of threats. Uh, I can only imagine. I People took it to the next level, yo, man. Somebody, somebody emailed me and was like, you talking about racism. You're the only racist nigger. And I'm like, wait, you just called me a nigger and then called me racist. Yeah. Like in the same email. Yeah, it was it was crazy yeah it was crazy and it was like not in i was barely getting sleep because people was asking for interviews man i did like the whole cnn run mm -hmm. um yeah we asked you too yeah <laughs> huh? no, we probably asked you too that's why i think the first time that i oh, started I seeing it yeah so. I, I, man honestly man my phone no it's cool i'm just not i'm just playing i'm just playing with you brother i'm gonna say my phone is flooded man i'm just playing with you but i know you said you wasn't like looking to be like uh yeah but how'd you even in get politics? in that position what at, for that for the for the for Trump that, situation? Yeah. Well, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's where people like you know get confused because it's like, um, yeah, I don't know. Like I don't be really like on a whole like bragging vibe and all that. And that's where like if I was like in the scumbaggery, like I could really like lifestyle market and do a bunch of what these other people be doing. But mm -hmm. like I was on the radar because a I was on a lot of weird as a city anyway, and mm -hmm. I got appointed to some things, especially during the, before with the protests, everything else. And then even before that, I was featured in USA Today for the work I was doing in the city with violence and stuff like that. They were covering national issues of violence. So like I was making national publications and stuff. And then somebody from NPR reached out. I didn't even know who NPR was because this is like how out of touch I'd be with like media. I don't even be caring about this. Stuff. I, I don't know who they are. Who NPR is uh, legit. I mean, they yeah. do. They were pretty much the original podcast. Yeah, oh, like, so they would do like yeah. short talks with people, like almost like TED talks. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, oh, but like on a political level, like a yeah. lot of people check them out. So, right, like, right. I literally was asking my friends because. Um, I was like, yo, these NPR folks reached out. They're like, and what? I'm like, and I wanted to know, like, because I'm like, is they like one of these like Fox News people trying yeah, yeah, yeah. to like use me? Like, oh, here's a black conservative or something. So yeah. I was kind of like, yo, I was asking people. I yeah. like, because honestly, I really ain't know who NPR was. Right, and right. NPR did the spot with me. 
And then it, like my emails, all that was going crazy too. You know what I'm saying? People were like, yeah. yeah, I listened to you on NPR because you know it was about Biden. They were asking me about Biden, and they were like, how comfortable do you feel about that? And I was keeping it on hundred. I'm like, man, I don't really feel comfortable. Like just because he's opposite of the dude right here, it's still it's don't like mean the lesser I'm good. two evils. Yeah, and I hate and I hate being. Don't put me in a position where I got to choose evil anyway. Right, so right. I don't even like that term. But from there, somebody. Uh, from ABC News, the actual like ABC News, and then like no shot to six ABC, they my folks. But um, but yeah, somebody from ABC News was like, "Yo, um, we've been, you know, we we've been seeing a lot of what you're doing, and you know, we looked into you, blah, 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 and they was like, you know, um, we considering, you know, having this town hall in Philadelphia. Would you be interested?" And I was like, "All right, cool." So you were invited there. Yeah, that's yeah, fire. Yeah, Hell yeah, yeah brother. Yeah, so. Um, I mean, so why yeah, wouldn't you take that? I mean, that's, that's such a yeah, cool opportunity, right? You know right. That's, so. that's, that's and that's right. and that's where I was at with it. I'm like, yo, as much as stuff that I, you know, I say on behalf of black community, you know, I ain't gonna lie. It took me like a day and a half to figure out what I wanted to ask. They like, yo, you get one question, mm-hmm. and I'm like, y'all gotta ask this dude one question. I'm asking, how does that feel in order to be like? Because did it feel like you was like a representative for the black community at that time, and you feel like was it? Did you feel pressure? You know, to ask the correct thing at that time? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, once I said yes to it, and then I was like, yo, I get one question. That's kind of wild. Yeah, yo, like, like, damn. And, and, and then they... Good yo, question, though. But they... Shout it out, And they also wanted to, like, limit your characters on the question. So it was like almost like a it's tweet. Like a Twitter. Yeah, it was like a Twitter. <laughs> Ten word I forgot, question. I forgot, he does love Twitter. Yeah, I forgot Twitter how many... Twitter, yeah. I forgot how many, like, characters it was. But I was like... <laughs> I'm, like, trying to phrase it and word it. And I'm like, oh, that's too long. Yeah. But... But it really was like, yo, um, yeah, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. But I was like, yo, I got to ask. Then after I broke down, like, again, I was talking to, like, some of my closest friends. And I was, it was like three or four questions. I can't remember what the other ones at this point. But I said, yo, this this the one right here. Yeah. So, and it was like, boom. Um, and it just so happened that, like, George Stephanopoulos and all that, like, and everybody questioned they didn't even get asked. That was the thing. So they selected what questions they really wanted to ask because it mm-hmm. probably was like, I don't know, probably like 18 of us there. Mm-hmm. And then I think it was only like probably like seven or eight questions that got asked. Mm-hmm. So they had to like kind of flow in because George would ask a question, then he like led into it, which leads us to Pastor Carl Day, you know, mm-hmm. from North Philadelphia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Then I had to read from my card, my question. Boom. And that was that was that. So I was like, man, you know, that's crazy. But um, yeah. Hmm. Um, I mean, that's, what a, that's a good experience. But I mean, I mean, it probably helped. I mean, also like, I mean, it helps with like social media, all that stuff. Because I mean, social is so big with spreading word in general. I mean, have, I mean, you've done a pretty good job at it too. I mean, yeah, do you absolutely. think social is something that like is a good way, like a good outlet for educating people, for giving people faith? For sure, for sure, I definitely do. Um, you know, I definitely do. I think I think social media is a gift and a curse, though. It's a double-edged you know sword. For yeah, sure. double-edged sword for sure. Because um, it's like you try to get too too wordy. Um, then you gotta, you know what I mean, kind of deal with um, the banter, debates, the trolls, and everything else. And it's just like, you know what I mean, now it's being counterproductive. So, like, to a degree, yeah. like, you kind of like post your content, go. Um, and for me, I don't know about everybody else. I can't speak very well, pastor and all that, but like, I like to still just be human a little bit too. Like, all right, yo, I'm gonna talk to some folks, talk about sports or something else that's going on. Right. Um, try to get on and laugh a little bit. Um, but again, like, that Trump thing was kind of crazy because it was like dealing with. The nonsense. Like, I mean, I had words with his son on there on Twitter at one point because uh, he started trying to push an article that, like, the New York Post tried to put up, like, because it was like they tried to spin it, like, oh man, he already hated Trump because they found, like, old tweets. They, this is what they do. Like, yo, like, this, it ain't, no ain't no joke. Ain't no joke. They found old, old tweets of me saying something about Trump. They're like, oh, he was undecided. But, and I was like, wait, well, why are you there? Let's go ahead and fact check this. Yeah. Come look at some stuff I said about Biden. Some, look at what I said about Obama too. Like yeah. these don't get yeah. deleted. I said what I said. Like you can go find that too. Look mm-hmm. what I said about Kamala. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, don't tell me, don't try to say I wasn't undecided when right, I'm right, telling right. you straight up, I really was undecided. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't even vote Obama last time. Yeah. So honestly, I, you sound like me. It's, it's so, it's so, and I'm a thinker, so I really just be sitting back analyzing both sides, and yeah. it's like, it's like a. But what it is every time is like when it's election time, they make a ton of promises. They try to drag in like, Absolutely. like it's weird how they they like they treat like in a Hispanic vote, right? It's like a number. It's yeah. not like people. It's like yeah. a number. We're like, how can we get all the Hispanic votes? How can we get all the Asian votes? How can we get all the black votes? How That's can we all get politics? So, is but then, lying, but then people feed it. into it like, oh, if you if you go this way or if you don't do that, then you're not with the rest of us. And you're like, hold up, this is like so. Yeah. And that's probably the problem too. I mean, like, cause you got thrown into like a public light pretty fast, right? I mean, like in a way, 
I mean, you've been building towards it, but like you really blew up, and then out of nowhere, they're like trying to dissect you, and you're just like, "What the fuck? Like this is crazy. You guys are crazy." Yeah, <laughs> man, it was. People all... going talk. Yeah, people going talk. Sure. Yeah, people sure. definitely going talk. I know you said you didn't want to be in politics, but in a way, you. Kind of, I mean, all right, poli- you're not kind of in politics, Let's do but. It. You're involved Run in the community. Be, no, no, no. Yeah. You you involved Sorry, in the community. Paid, yeah. You got your hands in the community. No you do a lot of things, you know, around the community. And like and one of the things is definitely getting involved with the youth. Mm-hmm. And I, I I like that a whole lot because like I feel like that's what we were talking about earlier. Like a lot of times the youth don't have that guidance, that person there that they can look at as a cool mentor or somebody that can look at as like somebody that can understand them and be mm-hmm. able to, you know, follow them, you know what I'm saying? And for you to be able to take that leadership role, I think that's pretty cool, you know what I mean? No like it's definitely not a politician role, but you got your hands in the community to where though honestly you probably got Dude, more, more of a plate. I exactly, say, I was about to say that. Any politician though, nine cool. times out of ten, these the youth in the community, shit, not even the youth. You got grown people in the community that that don't know these politicians in the community. You know what I'm saying? Correct. But a lot of times, people that have their hands in the community got more pull and sway, or more. It's a word I'm looking for. Uh, influence. Yeah. Influence yeah. on the community than these politicians. For sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Absolutely. I, I mean, no, I agree with you. And I, I've come to accept this, right? That like, um, that people view me as a public figure or somewhat of a political figure, but I'm right. not a politician. But like, you're not I a politician. That's cool. That. Yeah. I think it's good yeah. to... Yeah, like, because I, I mean, I am involved in politics, like you right. know what I'm saying, in, in regards to working with politicians, trying to create or, you know, invoke change in policies Absolutely. that impact people, which is politics in itself. Um, and I sit on, you know, various commissions, you know, with the mayor and the DAs and other people. So, um, and also the police. So, um, yeah. So now nah, I get it. But yeah, I just always make it clear. Like, nah, I'm like, cause see politicians can be voted out. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm not a politician. Yeah. yeah. So nobody I'm, I'm voting. Here to stay, yeah. I'm true. not running yeah, for nothing. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's why like, yeah, for me, I can't be canceled. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah and that's I'm, the best way to be. Shit. For you for got sure. full control of your whole everything right now. So. Absolutely. I'm still going to preach on Sunday. Yeah, and, right. And nobody's going to right. like, like stop going or anything because of what these politicians might say. So, But if you I, were like, mayor. If I were mayor. <laughs> <laughs> if you were. Because I just, I mean, like, not to keep pushing on it, but you know what I'm saying. But I just feel like, like you said, we don't need politicians. You to think we need people. Yes, yeah, if you was to do it, think <laughs> yeah. about some of the shit you would do when you was mayor. Do you go I mean, do you think, like, it? I mean, because, I mean, I personally think, like, education is such a big thing with people. Just to yeah. educate people on, like... There's jobs out there, mm-hmm. and it might not be the same jobs that you knew about. You know what I'm saying? But for sure, it's different now. Like you're, you could be an IT tech, or you could be a social media person. I mean, there's like different ways to make money. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but I feel like because you you educate the youth well, was right. that something you always like? Maybe not thinking all the way back. I mean, but like you have a way of connecting with the youth. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So is that just from experience, or is that something that you did? You have like siblings that kind of looked up to you or anything like that? I mean, well. I would say just off experience, man. And, you know, um, I mean, I still like consider myself young anyway now. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, but, um, and I mean, I got older kids and I'm still young. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm able to always still understand, you know, teens. My my older sons are 14 and 17. So, um, you know, so, yeah, I understand the youth. Yeah. Uh, plus, you know, just being in the streets and being around people. Um, I don't know, but I feel like... Um, the mayor thing, man, it, it, that like that's just nuance, you know what I'm saying? Like, True. and there's so much nuance to it that people don't really understand, which and where like I think the mayor gets like a bad rep at times because people really don't understand what goes into being mayor. It's tough. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot so, of people in the city. Like, a lot of people in the city, but more so like the the control isn't as clear cut. It's mm-hmm. like the same people that be like, oh, when their when their president is in, oh well, he couldn't really control the house and he couldn't control this. Yeah, I don't think city politics work the same way. True. You yeah. see what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. so, so like, that's why like, and people get mad at me at times. You know what I'm saying? Like, they ain't gonna get mad at me in person, but they get mad at me. And, <laughs> and, and like, you know, you, you see little sneaky, snarky remarks, but like energy just be different mm-hmm. when, when people see you. But, um, but people think that it's like a defense. Like people, cause they, me and the mayor has a, we have a good relationship and I got a good relationship with quite a few politicians. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And and unfortunately, like for me, again, it goes back to like even how I would deal in the streets. Like if me and you was cool and somebody mm-hmm. from, I don't even know, I don't know where you're from, but somebody might be from Germantown, like, man, no. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, you had Germantown? <laughs> yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, yeah. it could be somebody else from Germantown. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, oh, he a nut, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, nah, well, I don't I'm, know about all that, but I ain't about to treat him like he a nut because our relationship's solid. 
right, yeah. right, right. That's right. hearsay. You see what I'm saying? So right. it's like if every time you and I, based upon our relationship, if I need something for these kids, if I need something to happen, if I'm telling you, yo, and I treat every politician the same way, right. when I'm coming to you and I'm presenting what I'm presenting, and all you doing is garnering that support. Like it's council members, people might bad mouth. And guess what? Like dudes and came home from jails and I might call a certain politician. Yo, such and such. Yo, he two days home. I need a job. Yeah. Hey, contact this number right here. And this person right here can go ahead and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do the hiring. Plug him in. Yeah. So y'all want me to do what? Ride your coattail or your problem yeah. and just bad mouth somebody to the media? It yeah. don't work like that, especially when you got to understand politics. So that's why like for me, when... I get to see like what the mayor and others got to endure and mm -hmm. how that still got to go through other people. And then you got other sectors of pol politics that ain't really rocking with each other. So, you yeah. know, it ain't never about the workout anyway. Right. I don't got that. I, I'm not that political. Like, yeah. so I'm going to say probably what I want to say. Mm -hmm. And it's just really going to be a mess. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't like, dissect it like a motherfucker. Yeah. yeah like, 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 like I'm going to probably be like the black Trump without the racism, the bigotry and the idiocracy. But I'm right, going right. to probably be the one just saying all kinds of stuff you ain't supposed to say as a politician. Like, yeah. You know, it's also hard to be a politician too. No, How do you but, know? But, nothing, need, gets, but, but look, nothing gets done though that nah, way. I, guess I, right, I can't yeah. even lie to you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and, it's and, like if you burn bridges. Yeah, it's you like, can't. You can't form anything. At, at, at some point, people still have to work together, even if they have differences. You know what I'm saying? And it's like with dude when he was a the over office it was like yo <laughs> he just beefing with everybody saying yeah. what he want and nothing's getting done like true you, you know you can work yeah, with you, you need some kind of bipartisanship but it's like yeah so again like me seeing that you know like i said i mean i get to see what the mayor and council and others go through state reps and i'm like nah this ain't for me man yeah, it's a man, lot it's a lot to come with that it's a big belt yeah. that's some big shoes and like. it ain't black and white like everybody thinks so people just be yeah. like yo why you just why he just don't go through this and then the moment you bring logic into it, they think you're defending something. I'm yeah. like, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I had Listen. a dude, yo, I had a dude hit me up. Um, and, and, and if he see this, whatever. Um, <laughs> but I had a dude hit me up. Like, like the girls that was twerking in the uh, Malcolm X part. Oh, yeah. Y'all seen that? For, no, uh, the June pole teeth. dancing or something like that. Yeah, yeah. not yeah, not too far from Juneteenth or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. They send me the, the 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 DM like, and this is crazy, but it's like, yo, people don't understand the position that you be in at times, like, you know what I mean? Because again, like, you know, it's a known thing that you know, like me and the administration, the mayor, we are, right, we cool, we got a relationship, I got a relationship with like a lot, a lot of people, but so people think like me and Mayor Kenny like super duper tight or whatever, like, but they like, yeah, this is what the mayor is sitting here allowing. So I literally respond I'm like, okay, one, like, yeah, shaky butts dope. I, I said, uh, look, I said one, like, uh, what does this have to do with me? Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, I don't know I'm like, two, like, have you that's explored? What, I mean. what does this got to do with me? The look, fuck? That's the first, that's the first thing. So, so two, right. I'm like, have you looked into whatever the rights is that these people may have to whatever they were doing? Cause I didn't even pay no mind. But one thing I've learned when you get closer to what's going on politically, there are a ton of rights for people to have like in this country, in this city. Yeah, so, so while we might be thinking it's black and white, how these people got tents downtown and they stand there and they just bow garden half of downtown. No, it's certain rights these people got, and you just can't go in and violate. Because if you do that, the next thing you know, they saying, "Look what you did," and you just sat there and pretty much set up a bomb. And you would, you attack them. It's like you can't do certain stuff. Right. So, again, that's nuance. So yeah. I'm just like, two, do you have you looked into that? Because I don't know what their rights are. I said, three, did you send this to the mayor? Like, yeah. <laughs> dude, straight block me. Okay, have a blessed day and block me. So I'm uh, again, but. Again, people take that as like a sign of defense right. when it's just like, yo, we'll never see progress if we continue to operate or be activated off of ignorant outrage. Yeah. We'll never see progress if we just continue to be activated or mobilized off of ignorant outrage. You got to understand what's going on around you. That's mm -hmm. like in any battle. That's like in any fight. It's like, like if you panic. Dog, you then can't, then that's you where you can't go up. fight a skilled fighter not understanding how to fight just because you mad and you go out windmilling swinging and he dips all that and knocks you right on out yeah and that's what we do a lot of times with all this outrage and we're just yelling talking about no do this do that do this do that and it's just like y'all know how much more nuanced this is mm -hmm. so yeah. it's almost just telling people to educate themselves on stuff like if you don't know about something don't get mad about it why don't you look into it you know what i'm saying the internet you know what i'm saying you can find anything really. that's what i that's what i say you, we in the information age you can figure out 
pretty much damn near. But but you, you know you know the beauty of all of that, right? You don't even have to go look it up and do all that. People keep asking for another Martin and Malcolm, but our people ain't even trying to mobilize and get behind the leaders that we already have that mm. can educate us. True. See, a lot of us can skip Google just Absolutely by following right. the leaders that are already at the table. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They have track records. Like, y'all talking to me right now. Dog, I, I'm in the streets every day. Was mm -hmm. down City Hall. Was just meeting with some people from the AG office early today. Like, this is what I'm doing constantly. And people see it. They'll press like. They'll shout me out. They'll put gold emojis up and all that. <laughs> but it's like, damn. You, you know there? what? You yeah. can you can also all you got to do is be present now. Mm -hmm. Get behind the voice. We want people to have seat at the table all the time. But what my voice for the hood gonna matter if the hood ain't gonna back the play a thousand percent? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody else, I'm gonna sit at the table with like this proverbial table, right? Where like the powers that be or whomever that's representing their demographics, whether it's the union delegation here, whether it's such and such community here, LGBTQ community here, somebody else here, Asian community. Guess what? All the people got. Tons of people behind them that's gonna represent voters, money, everything else. Absolutely. Mm. Is there anything that, like, maybe one message or a few or something short that you wanna to speak to the youth about, maybe, to close out with? Man, uh, to the youth, wherever you at, man, um, if you in them streets, realize the streets was always just supposed to be means for you to be able to get out of your circumstances. Um, all this black genocide was never the plan. Um, and the streets in itself is a trap, you know what I mean? Only thing real about them streets is the consequences. So uh, do yeah. yourself a favor. Understand that you got your whole life ahead of you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Dying early ain't no accolade. Uh, taking the lives of people ain't no achievement. And you don't get no award for that. Only thing you get awarded is hell and, 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 and that cell. Talk so um, beyond that, man, you know, like it's okay to just... <laughs> Be productive, you know what I'm saying? Make something out your life and marry you a fine woman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like seriously, like do that, strive for that. And to, to even the elders too, the people that millennials into their thirties or whatever, late twenties, early thirties, all that kind of stuff, late thirties. Yo, realize that you've watching you too. Stop critiquing them, but they paying attention to what you're doing too, not just what you're saying. So we gotta do a better job of setting the standard too and being a better example. So that's it, man. Thank y'all mm. for having me too. Yeah, I just wanna say one more thing. I know yeah. you said that I know you said that you 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 put everything or you credit a lot of where or how you got to this point to God. But me, I'm a I'm not taking nothing from that. But I I believe in faith without works is dead. For sure. I do I believe that too. That's James. You and I that believe that and I believe that, you know, you deserve a lot of credit in that frame as well because you can have that. all the faith in the world but, but you if you don't get up off yes, your ass you gotta be obedient sure. absolutely if you don't if you don't get up off your behind having faith ain't gonna do nothing for you no doubt you know what i'm saying so you deserve all the flowers that you do that you that you for what you're doing right now for the youth for the community and we just want to say we appreciate everything you're doing i appreciate it yeah. yeah. thank you appreciate we appreciate that. you yeah, coming yeah. pastor and until next time kids this is public bang hey. you got my vote though brother just,